Daniel and Gail Daniello Building. Please welcome to the stage the 12th Chancellor and President of Syracuse University, Kent Severud. Good morning, everybody. This is such a happy day for Syracuse University, for this region, for the state of New York, and for our country. A lot of people around here have been wondering what could possibly feel better in mid-October than to have an undefeated ACC football team. <laughs> <laughs> and, and today we all know. Uh, on behalf of the entire Syracuse University community, it's my great pleasure to welcome you in this one-of-a-kind building for this once-in-a-lifetime moment. The National Veterans Resource Center at the Daniel and Gail Daniello Building is what we like to refer to as a first, best, and only. It's the first building on a college campus dedicated solely to the lives and well-being of our veterans, military families, and servicemen and women. It's the best because it houses the world-class Institute for Veterans and Military Families which leverages the intellectual power of the university to advance a best-in-class portfolio of research and programming and services that are dedicated to the veteran and military community around the nation. Finally, it's the only building of its kind fully dedicated to this purpose in the world. Uh, this building is pretty spectacular, but it's the work within these walls that really transforms lives. And we come together today in this building to celebrate an announcement that no doubt will transform central New York. In just a moment, our friends from Micron Technology are going to talk about why you're all here today. You also hear from some of our elected leaders. Together with members, many members of the central New York community, these leaders advocated for our region. They made a compelling case for why our community is uniquely positioned to support Micron's vision for the future. Today is a great day, certainly for Syracuse University and for all who are orange, but much more importantly, it's a great day for Central New York, for our whole community, for our people, for our future, and for our country. We are proud to be the academic heart of this community. We're proud to welcome Micron to Syracuse University. I've never been more optimistic and confident about the future of this region than I am today. At this time, I am pleased to welcome you to the stage, the governor of the state of New York, Kathy Hochul. the Chief Executive Officer of Micron Technology, Sanjay Miroda. <laughs> United States Senate Majority Leader, Chuck Schumer. <laughs> and Onondaga, Onondaga County Chief Executive, Ryan McMahon. It, it took many leaders with a shared vision to get us to this extraordinary day. I'd like to welcome one of those leaders to the podium now, our own extraordinary senator from New York, Chuck Schumer. And I want to tell our great chancellor that I am SU from, from top to bottom. <laughs> Okay, whoa, ladies and gentlemen, after years and years of hard work, it's official, Micron is coming to central New York. <clears throat> now, if there's a word to describe today, it's transformational. Transformational for upstate New York, transformational for America. This, this is the largest private investment in New York history and probably in the nation. 
Yes, folks, this is our Erie Canal moment. Just as the Erie Canal fueled explosive prosperity and jobs in the 19th century, so will these investments fuel explosive jobs and prosperity in the 21st century. And this plant will be the most advanced memory chip manufacturer in America and probably the world, all here in central New York. <clears throat> Now, we invented the chip here in America, and once again, here we go. We invented the chip in America, and once again, we are going to make them here, right here in upstate New York and in America. I truly believe that our children and our grandchildren will benefit from what we announce today with jobs and a future we could never imagine. Now, this has been a passion of mine, a passion. I feel this so fervently, so strongly. I feel so, so passionately about it. It's why I worked so long and so hard and so persistently for the last three years, first to author and pass the CHIPS and Science Bill, with Sanjay's great help, and bring Micron to central New York, and to the innovators and job creators and workers that witnessed the slow erosion of semiconductor manufacturing moving overseas, we will bring these jobs back to our shores and end our dependence on foreign-made chips. <laughs> chips, we know how vital chips are. Chips power everything, everything from cars and household appliances to medical devices and, and cell phones. And, they'll, and these chips will be made right here. Make no mistake about it. This is the future. Too often, government, businesses, are accused of short-term thinking. But this is one of the most significant long-term investments made anywhere in America in decades. Again, this, this is the future. Now just listen to these eye-popping, mind-boggling, and sublime numbers. They are sublime. <laughs> Micron will invest $100 billion over 20 years to build the largest semiconductor fabrication facility in the history of the United States, right here in Onondaga County. This site will feature the largest clean room ever announced in the U.S., 2.4 million square feet, the size of 40 football fields. It'll make the Carrier Dome look kind of small here in central New York. And this massive project will be built with union labor and good paying jobs. Thousands and thousands of union workers building one of the largest construction projects ever in the nation. It will create 9,000 new high paying Micron jobs and over 40,000 additional jobs in the community including suppliers, contractors, and construction, 50,000 good-paying New York jobs, enough to fill every seat in the JMA Dome. <laughs> now we call it JMA. <laughs> the old days, it was the bad carrier. <laughs> and it includes an unprecedented and deeply impactful community investment framework that will invest in education and job training and child care and community services. Everyone in this community will benefit, everyone. And it will do that here in central New York and help those who need access to jobs and new opportunities that they never had before. Let me thank my colleagues in this endeavor. First and foremost, Governor Hochul. Governor Hochul has been an eager, sharp-minded, effective partner. Her first in the nation green chips legislation sent a message to the entire industry that New York is open for business. 
while her team at Empire State Development crafted a strong incentive package. At every critical moment in the long, complicated, and sometimes tense process, Governor Hochul was there. She and I shared a vision to make upstate New York a global center for innovation and semiconductor and other advanced manufacturing. We knew that we could resurrect our manufacturing greatness here in central New York, which has the combination of skilled workers, infrastructure, and site specs, and the clean power to land a mammoth chip factory. Together, she and I forged a genuine partnership to make this vision a reality. On the local level, County Executive Ryan McMahon saw a golden opportunity at White Pine and made strategic investments that turned it into the nation's premier greenfield for semiconductor manufacturing. Ryan felt as I did. If we build it, they will come. His actions paved the way for this project and took guts and gumption. And today, folks, today, Micron is walking in from the cornfields to play ball in White Pine for many decades to come. And last, but certainly not least, someone who's become my dear friend, who we've gotten to know so well, Sanjay Marotra. Sanjay built one of the most innovative companies in America and is now following through on his vision to bring leading-edge semiconductor manufacturing back to America, including right here in upstate New York. I must have spoken to Mr. Mar Marotra 50 times, maybe even more. We knew each other's phone numbers by heart. And we worked as a team to pass the Chips and Science legislation, including getting the tax credit, the investment tax credit, so vital to bringing, uh, bringing Micron here, and that was not easy to do. But I want to say this. Every time I spoke with Sanjay, I urged him to look at White Pine here in central New York because I knew if he gave it a real look, he'd agree it was the best site for Micron. To Sanjay's credit, he did just that. He gave it a real objective look, and here we are. I thank him for that commitment to our country and for sticking with me as I made the case why there was, and this is over two years I've been pushing on this, I, while, while I made the case that there was no better place in the country than upstate New York for him to make this big investment for their company. And of course, we can't forget the work of Rob Simpson at Center State and Greg Lancet of the Central New York Building Trades for building up this region over decades and for their help in cooperating and persuading why Central New York was such a great place to locate. We are here today because of all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But of course, none of this would have been possible at White Pine, or in the U.S. for that matter, without the chips and science legislation I was proud to author. I said for many years, if I was lucky enough to be majority leader, I'd use my position to deliver for New York in a, pain, in a, in a really significant way. This included passing legislation to bring semiconductor manufacturing back to America, especially to New York. But it was also so important to me because of my experience in places like Syracuse, a community that helped build America, but for decades has hemorrhaged manufacturing jobs overseas. I still recall that painful, awful meeting when the head of carrier, UT, told me they were going to move manufacturing jobs from Syracuse, its hometown, to Singapore and China. It was infuriating. It was devastating. It has stuck with me for 20 years. But I knew then what I know now. This community is innovative. It is tough. It is resilient. And if we could just level the playing fields, Syracuse could go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, not, ju not just with Silicon Valley and Austin and Boston, but with Shanghai and Beijing in being a global hub for innovation and manufacturing. That's exactly what the Chips and Science Bill was all about. 
giving upstate New York and places around it, all around the country, a rebirth in tech economy. That's why almost three years ago, I proposed a, quote, moonshot to invest in cutting edge tech like semiconductors so we could outcompete China. That became my Endless Frontier Act. And then I spent the last three years working to pass it into law, ultimately manifesting itself in the Chips and Science Act. And I want to thank my colleague, with this was a bipartisan bill, Todd Young of Indiana, for his partnership in getting this done. It was bipartisan. And each of us had a vision that we wanted new places to benefit from high-end manufacturing and research. Places like Syracuse and, for him, Indianapolis. Now, all of these major microchip companies are considering investing in the U.S. because of these federal incentives. Without the effort we've led, none of this would have been happening. Without the Chips and Science Bill, some politician in France or Germany or China, and not us, would be announcing to the world that they had secured a new mammoth chip fab for their nation and the economy. Look, as you all knew, congressional uh, negotiations were all but dead over the summer. But the stakes were too high for the country and for New York to let the bill fail. So with white pine as my guiding light, we got the bill passed, and the rest is history. This project will fundamentally transform the region into a new global hub for innovation and high-tech jobs. And these good-paying jobs will be made available to disadvantaged populations, veterans, minorities, women, rural New Yorkers, so all of central New York can benefit. New Yorkers and Americans will look back 50 years from now and remember this project as our Erie Canal moment. In fact, we've come full circle. The Erie Canal was completed nearly 200 years ago, this month, October 26, 1825, and made Syracuse and upstate New York the heartbeat for the nation's industrial revolution. Back then, mules slowly and surely pulled bar barges of raw material from a new nation's rich and wild interior to its exploding ports including what became our greatest metropolis, New York City. All along, its path, all along its path, it created hubs of trade and culture and energy and activity that became the industrial heartland. Today, along this same physical space, we will build semiconductors, a microscopic device that powers so many of the vital products of modern life, and one that connects people ideas, and institutions across the globe. This new pathway is a virtual canal that moves information and innovation at the speed of light much faster than that of a mule. And it will be the energy that can revive this long-suffering heartland throughout America. Today, Micron's investment will once again transform Syracuse and upstate New York and make New York's semiconductor corridor from the Hudson Valley, Albany, to the Mohawk Valley, to Binghamton, Rochester, Buffalo, with Syracuse right at the center, into a 21st century Erie Canal as a major engine of the modern economy supplying made in New York micro trips to power our daily lives, our economic success, and our national security. So today, it's almost an understatement to say today is a great day, but it is. Today is a great day. It is a transformative day, a great day for Syracuse, a great day for upstate New York, and a great day for America. Thank you. Backwards. And now, it is my honor, as I mentioned, to introduce my partner in this, somebody who has always stepped up to the plate and had, take, had New York take the lead among all the other states, our great governor, Kathy Hochul. Good morning, and thank you, Majority Leader. Majority Leader is the difference. Uh, that is why 
Chuck Schumer was so successful in being able to work with President Biden and to achieve something that was perhaps unthinkable not long ago. So uh, to our majority, leader, our own Senator Chuck Schumer, I stand here with a heart full of gratitude for everything you have done and the way you have championed this and never, never gave up. So thank you, as, and thank you for being such an incredible partner. Uh, it's great to be back at Syracuse. I want to commend Ken Superud, our chancellor. I, I arrived here a few decades ago, an idealistic young student wanting to study something known as political science, uh, and now to be able to return to this very space to be able to make one of the most transformative announcements that I perhaps ever will as governor of the state of New York is something that is deeply humbling for me uh, and something that's very exciting. Uh, Ryan McMahon, I'll be introducing in a couple of minutes our county executive. Thank you for helping spearhead this initiative. And Rob Simpson, the president of Center State CEO. I also do want to acknowledge uh, the incredible team at ESD, uh, Hope Knight, who stepped into this a very new in our administration when we saw an opportunity that we would just not let go. And what Kevin Eunice, you did with our team, it was extraordinary. And I'm so proud that we have created the model of how we do something that is once thought impossible to all of you and their team, uh, and to James Katz, who's the Deputy Secretary for Economic Development. But also this happened, we're gonna talk about the Green Chips Bill in a minute, but it had to get through the legislature. And I do wanna thank Majority Leader Andre Stewart-Cousins, Speaker Kyle Hasty, and our partners, Al Sturpey in the Assembly, and Jerry Cooney in the Senate for getting this through as well. But also, how do we not mention Sanjay? Uh, Sanjay, I'll talk about you in a second, but when we had a chance to just literally just hug each other tightly when we saw each other, we realized that something magical was happening here. And I hope you feel that same sense of awe and wonder that we all feel here about the possibilities that seem so unlimited right now. And I will always be grateful that there's someone like you who came to this country with a dream, and now you're helping make New York's dreams come true as well. So thank you, Sanjay. The CEO of this great company. Well, you know, today started as an ordinary Tuesday for most Central New Yorkers, most New Yorkers, unsuspecting that a life-altering announcement awaited them at this very hour. Something that would give hope of a better tomorrow, something that could turn naysayers into believers, and something so transformative and scale and possibility that the economic future of New York State is now beyond imagination. And now that moment has arrived. We are gathered here as a result of an exclusive, almost never happening, extraordinary, unprecedented collaboration between the private sector, businesses, labor, local elected leaders, our federal leaders, and ultimately the state to be able to close on a deal which will be known as the investment of the century. News accounts, if you watch other states, have touted historic announcements in this field, advanced technology and semiconductor announcements, but they thought that was very big. I won't name a particular state that starts with an O. Uh, <laughs> I'm here to say that's great, but this is New York State. Everything we do is bigger, bolder, and ultimately better. And if you need proof, I'll just say, as the governor of this great state, I am overjoyed. I am so proud and I am so honored that after a global search and a national search, that Micron, this global leader in semiconductor manufacturing, has committed over $100 billion over the next 20 years. $100 billion, just think of the scale of that. Five times larger than the other one that everybody thought was so great somewhere else. <laughs> I'm a New Yorker, I have to do this. So, what does this mean? What does this mean? White Pines Commerce Park, literally 20 minutes down the road from here in Clay, will be the home to the next generation of chip manufacturing. And as we heard from the Senator, over 5,000 hardworking men and women of labor, and I thank labor for getting this done with us, Greg Lansen and others, who stepped up when I said, there's something we need to have happened here, and you made it happen. But those building trades workers are going to continue to buy houses, invest in our communities, raise their kids here. There are children who aren't even born yet who will be working in this project. That is extraordinary. And also the over 50,000 indirect jobs over time. I mean, this will be a community. This is as large as a town. We'll hear 
be here to announce, to be part of this history. You know, I think about in January, I stood with Senator Schumer in Albany Nanotech, and I said, watch out, watch out, world. The semiconductor industry will now be New York's industry. And I declared that we'd also be the semiconductor capital of the entire world. And I know Senator Schumer had something nice and big to show up here, but I, I, I'm a little shorter. I go a little smaller. But uh, what he showed was the, the foundation of what is right here, this tiny little chip. It doesn't look big, but it really has power. And this is so central to our existence, this tiny chip, that I just want all of you to do an experiment with me. Pull out your cell phone for a second. Everybody pull out your cell phone. I know you all have them. <laughs> pull out your cell phones. Pull out your cell phones. Now take a look at your cell phone. Many of you love your cell phones. You can't imagine life without your cell phone, OK? Now put it away and imagine a world where supply chains, global supply chains are disrupted. The ports are crowded. The materials are not coming from other places where they're manufactured, the, this critical part of it. Or think of a geopolitical situation where something manufactured in a country that now turns on us and has embargoes and trade practices to stop us from being able to receive this chip. That's called a world without these semiconductors if we don't make them here. That is the national security that we have to stand up against. That's why we must manufacture these right here in America. And what better place than in New York? So they will be made. Because of Micron, they will be made right here in New York, protecting our national security, our economic security, and ultimately the consumer security. Because we cannot count on the foreign supply chains any longer. To keep them running, we must make them here. And as we said, you have to wonder, why was New York chosen? I'm sure you'll hear from Sanjay, why New York? Why New York? But I have a few philosophies, on, a little thought on this. New York was born ready for this opportunity. A chance like this to just demonstrate what our state motto, Excelsior, ever upward means. What does that truly mean? Because we are heading upward. And it's also because we have persevered through the toughest times. We started meeting when the pandemic was still, on, was still raging. It was even before Omicron when we had these conversations. But they know that New Yorkers have that tough spirit. Through the toughest times, we always prevail. And I also know that other companies will see this as a message today of the confidence that a global leader like Micron has in a state like New York, and it will also foster their desire to come here as well. That is the ripple effect of this announcement. Because they'll also want to be at the epicenter of what we're known as the fourth industrial revolution because it's all going on right here. And it's, it takes a lot of work. You have to have the infrastructure. You have to have the shovel-ready sites. And very early on, literally my first weeks as governor, I think my first official meeting, went into my nice fancy conference room. I was able to welcome leadership from the Micron team. And I knew the stakes were high. I had to make the best pitch I could because I, I knew where they were looking. A lot of people said that we didn't have a chance. A lot of naysayers out there. As an upstater and as an SU grad, I had a chance to talk and talk about my knowledge of this area like no other could. Talk about the affordable homes, the great public schools, a vibrant downtown city, easy commutes, access to the best vacation spots in the world, the Finger Lakes, the Adirondacks, the Thousand Islands. I, just, I said, this place is fun. This is where people are going to want to work and live. But also, we benefit from having nation-leading research centers, educational institutions like SU, and the many great, high-quality institutions that are all over upstate New York. And so you'll have the talent you need. That was a big question. Will we have the workers we need? Where are they going to come from? Well, I also said, this is where we attract the best and the brightest. People want to be here. And we are known for our innovation and being risky and taking gutsy moves. as. The senator mentioned like superhuman engineering feats like the Erie Canal. People said it couldn't be done at all. But also we have that legacy of manufacturing. It's in our DNA. You think about the Carrier Corporation, Kodak down the road, companies like GE, Carrier, as I mentioned, Carrier Corning, not far from here. And the incredible work ethic we have here. When people work at a company, like my dad and grandpa worked 
at a steel plant. Grandpa stayed there his entire career. My uncle stayed there their entire career. That's what New Yorkers do. They work hard, and we talked about that. So for me, as the first upstate governor in 100 years, this is a personal quest, and failure was not an option. After months of dinners and phone calls and Zoom meetings and working so closely with the senator to strategize on what we needed to be done and how to work with Washington, and deepening our personal relationships, which are important to all of us, deepening our relationships, we knew we could make the impossible actually possible. And as I mentioned, one of the things we had to overcome was getting a solid project labor agreement in place. Greg Lancet, thank you. You were an important part of this. Also, the second thing that had to happen, we did have to get the federal legislation through. And thank God we have someone with the influence and the desire to make this happen as the majority leader from New York. I do believe that that was critical in the success of that getting through. But also, New York had to be competitive with every other state. And as the federal bill was making its way through, we saw our opportunity. The legislature was still in session. We started drafting our own with the support of the legislature just days after the federal law looked like it was going to be successful. I signed the nation-leading green ships bill right here in New York. And what we find is that because Micron's goals and values as a company align so closely with New York's, they were fully on board with everything that our green chips, notice the word uh, emphasis on green, because we knew that they would make commitments to our environment, sustainability, and to the community at large. Measures like ensuring re using renewable energy for their electricity, achieving high levels of energy efficiency, and meeting our greenhouse emission standards. This is a leader who's now raised the bar for other companies by meeting these standards. And the beneficiaries? the children who aren't even born yet, who will find upstate New York their home because of this project. We're doing this for generations to come, these investments. They want to have a long-term lasting impact on our environment, and not just Mother Earth, but also the environment of the community, and reaching out to underserved communities. As we mentioned, Syracuse right here. There's a lot of people who need a good job. They need that training. They need our veterans who need that extra help when they come back from their service. So over $500 million invested in supporting the training of people and giving them that hope and that opportunity. And I just want to say my final comments here. In my State of the State address, I said I would jumpstart the economy and ensure that New York State was the most business-friendly and the most worker-friendly state in the nation. Micron is one of those companies who gave New York State a second look, and a third look, and a fourth look. They're here a lot. Uh, because of our pro-growth policies, and especially now, I believe that this will be a catalyst for more supply chain companies to come here as well. New York is being seen as the place businesses want to be. And from across the nation, the best and brightest minds will continue to come here. But there's one more final reason I want to mention on why I believe at this particular time in our nation's history, with everything that's happening, that New York is the place to be. And as New York's first woman governor, here's my message to all companies out there. New York will always protect basic health rights of women. We'll always support the LGBTQ community. We'll always celebrate diversity, the rights of diverse populations. And more than other, any other state, I will say we cherish the rights of all. And we'll continue to be that beacon of hope and the advancement of progress that has always been in our DNA. So to Sanjay and the Micron family, we thank you for embracing these same values and your confidence in New York is something we absolutely share. This is a point of enormous pride. My heart is still pacing, racing, because it's extraordinary. This could have slipped away, and it didn't. It's here today. This is powerful. So I say thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, Sanjay, for just giving us a whole new lease on life here in the state of New York. And another important partner in this is the county executive from Onondaga. Uh, he actually represents the town of Clay, and I was thinking about the word Clay. And I reminded that for early man, Clay was a foundation. You built with Clay. You made things with Clay. And as a result of this, Today, out of Clay, the town of Clay, we'll build the foundation of the future. 
And that is our key. And the key is to have local partners. With that, let me welcome County Executive Ryan McMahon. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. All right, a little bit better than that. Good morning, everyone. It's a hell of a day here. Um, the, uh, Sanjay, Senator, Governor, uh, this community has been waiting for this moment for over 30 years. And without the three of you, uh, we would not be here today. Uh, and so from the bottom of my heart, speaking for everyone in Adelaide County, but also Central New York, uh, thank you. Uh, when you look at all of this and you look at success, and success we know has many, many authors. Uh, I just wanted to take the opportunity to acknowledge uh, the specific contributions of many of you all here today. Uh, to win a project like this, you need a site. And you need the premier site to get the premier company. Uh, and certainly, we had many people working on that. We also needed, uh, very specifically, uh, federal legislation. Uh, with the CHIPS Act and with the uh, investment tax credit. And I can say there was no one more tenacious, really, that I've ever seen in my career than Senator Schumer in that process. Um, Senator, without that, uh, we would not probably be here today. Uh, thank you uh, from uh, the McMahon family and the Central New York family. In addition to that, when you're uh, competing against the world and you offset those barriers and you have a site that you know is competitive, it's a competition among, among states. And uh, I know that you don't get this type of investment if you don't have a governor that will literally answer the phone and understand the playing field that we were up against. And Governor Hochul, you did just that. And without that, I can assure you, uh, Sanjay and Micron would not be here uh, as I lived through uh, the site selection process, and the many ups and downs. So thank you for your unique contributions to this on this historic day. I do want to thank our local partners uh, at the county IDA, the county legislature, my senior team, specifically my right hand in this process, Bob Petrovich and his team. I do, I do want to thank uh, Congressman Katko, Assemblyman Sturpey, uh, the senators who participated in this uh, for their legislation and their votes that helped make this a reality. Our other local partners that have helped position Central New York and our community to be a growing community, one that has seen uh, not just growth in uh, economic activity and in jobs, but in population. Because without your efforts, collectively, we would not be positioned well to succeed. And when you look at this, at one point in this process, uh, we had a dinner. Uh, I invited the governor to dinner, and the governor came in, and Sanjay came in for dinner, and many of the Micron team was here. And I distinctly remember, uh, Sanjay, uh, you telling us that you put together the greatest site selection team together in the history of the country, and you were right. Uh, and I wanted to thank that team specifically. Uh, Manish, April, certainly Scott, Buddy, uh, Courtney, Nick, Dan, Mike, uh, your team was uh, tasked, they were tenacious, uh, and at the end of the day, they shared our values. Uh, and with the greatest site attraction team ever put together, uh, which was uh, all of the, our federal partners, our state partners, our local partners, uh, United States Senate offices, governor offices, county executive offices, people of different political parties. This was the greatest bipartisan site attraction team that was ever put together. And I want to acknowledge uh, certainly uh, John Cardinal, Joe Nemi, Hope, Kevin, Jeff Januszewski, all of our partners there. Uh, certainly uh, we'll talk about Rob Simpson and his unique contributions there. But when you put together the greatest site selection team and the greatest site attraction team, that we've seen, you create one of the greatest projects and the greatest opportunities in the history of the country. As Senator Schumer has said, this is our generation's Erie Canal moment, and we have to seize this moment. It's our job to make sure every corner of this community and this region see this transformation, feel this transformation, and stare down their new economic opportunity. 
to the residents of this community, the greatest company of memory technology in the world just made their largest investment in their company's history on you. This is validation. It's validation in our community, our values, and most important, it's validation in you, our people. The future of this country is now. It is here in Onondaga County, in central New York. And listen, everybody, buckle up. It's coming, and it's coming now. So I certainly want to, I have one idea before I want to introduce my friend. But Sanjay, I believe that in Clay, New York, that first chip that is manufactured needs to go directly into a smartphone that we then give to Senator Schumer to retire his famous flip phone immediately. What do you think, Senator? All right, all right. But I'm still not going to do All right, but um, I do want to acknowledge uh, my friend Rob Simpson. Uh, Rob and I have been uh, working together with so many of you locally uh, really uh, for well over a decade. I know I look way too young to think I've been doing this for a decade, but uh, the unique contributions in this uh, were made by so many, uh, and Rob brought his team uh, together uh, and really helped us uh, showcase our community, uh, really uh, highlight our workforce talent, uh, and uh, certainly uh, as a representative of the business community, uh, was key in this process. So at this time, I want to uh, welcome my friend Rob Simpson to the, the podium. Thanks. Wow. You know, the, uh, the pride and excitement that I feel for our community today is indescribable. Governor, you mentioned the companies that have come before and the legacy of this region. 70 years ago today, uh, my grandfather, Robert P. Simpson, clocked into work in Electronics Park in Liverpool, New York. Going to work for GE when there were 22,000 people working out there at the leading edge of technology development and innovation. And his story was the story of so many central New Yorkers. One filled of opportunity, prosperity, and a bright future for his young family. And in many ways, it could be said that his story was the story of American manufacturing and technological advancement. Those stories, as we well know, have had their ups and downs. A moment where opportunity was perhaps less prevalent, where prosperity seemed more a hallmark of a past age, and where our region's economy seemed more uncertain than bright. But that's the remarkable thing about stories. There is always another chapter to be written. Over the past decade, our central New York community has taken ownership of its future and worked to reposition our economy and our workforce for success in the 21st century. Our private sector, along with our public partners, our philanthropic organizations, our academic institutions, our not-for-profit organizations have worked tirelessly to invest in people and in place and in technology with an eye towards regaining our global relevance in manufacturing and innovation. A relevance that at times, perhaps to some, seemed to have faded and a relevance that today we rightfully reclaim. What we've done is rewarding for so many reasons, but maybe the most important is how we have done it. By working together and refusing to accept anything short of what this community deserves. Onondaga County has owned the White Pine site for more than 25 years. But it was not until County Executive McMahon took office that this park evolved into the premier mega site in the United States. County Executive McMahon had the courage to acquire the acreage, to invest in water and wastewater, to leverage the site's unique power assets, and to hang out and open for business sign, even when it was not popular. Likewise, Governor Kathy Hochul, a governor for our whole state, but one with upstate New York roots, has made economic development a hallmark of her tenure, first as a lieutenant governor and now as governor. 
She spent countless hours touring our communities, learning about our needs, and listening to our aspirations. And she has delivered in the biggest way. The New York Green Chips legislation is breathtaking in both the scale of its ambition and the swiftness of its payoff. To put New York State at the front of the line for semiconductor reshoring opportunities, to drive critical investments in climate and community that are necessary for our long-term success as a state. Her leadership and vision and ability to get things done are simply exceptional. And Senator Chuck Schumer, a fierce and tireless advocate for New York State, a lifelong public servant, a cunning legislature, legislator, and a highly successful majority leader that in one brilliant stroke managed to rewrite U.S. industrial policy, spearhead leading edge investments in technology and innovation, advance our nation's global competitiveness, and deliver for his constituents here in New York. Absent any of these three leaders on this stage, this project does not happen. And the same could be said for dozens of other people who worked every single day for almost 15 months to make this project possible. Kevin Yunus, John Cardinal, Bob Petrovich, Nora Spillane, the list is long. This has been a remarkable collaboration. And it reinforces the message that when we work together, we win. It really is that simple. Now our prize today is not this announcement. Our prize is something far more important than that. It is a deep and lasting partnership with the US leader in memory design and manufacturing. And in a world where even the tires on our cars have 26 different sensors, data, connectivity, and the ability to store and process all that accumulated information will win the 21st century. In Micron, we have found a partner that not only aligns with our existing regional strategy, but we have found one who shares our values. A belief in US manufacturing and innovation, a commitment to climate, equity, and community, and a steadfast confidence in the ability of a company or a community to reinvent itself. Sanjay, to you and to your entire team, all of whom are remarkable, thank you for your faith in us and welcome to Central New York. It's now my pleasure to welcome back to, to the podium Governor Kathy Hochul and Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Well, we have the pleasure now to introduce Micron CEO Sanjay Marotra. Now, this may be a new name for many of you here in central New York, but given the positive impact of this mega project, I predict that Sanjay may soon be as popular and well-known a name in Syracuse as DeWitt or Melo or Beheim or Brown. <laughs> Wait a minute, Senator. I'm the one who went to school here. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me mention, also, you forgot one of my favorites, Ernie Davis, the yes. Express, yes. Uh, first black Heisman Trophy winner. But you're absolutely right. Uh, our Sanjay is actually our this year's, this century's Heisman Trophy winner. <laughs> and I'm so proud to know that your team is going to be on the field. We're gonna be, you will be recognizable when you want to walk to the stores here in Syracuse. And as I mentioned, you know, you've already known our restaurants. I know last night you went back to Lemongrass where we had our chance on that bitter cold night in January. We got together and had this dinner. I was supposed to stop by for a cocktail. I stayed three and a half hours because it took that long to talk about all the great things about how upstate New York is. So, uh, and Senator, you know about this because you like to travel all 62 counties every year. And uh, certainly you know all our great assets here as well. And that was our selling point. Well, no doubt it was a great selling point. We had a great product to sell which was upstate New York. Now, for a year and a half, I've talked to Sanjay over dozens and dozens of conversations about all that New York could offer um, to make Micron's investment a success. And when it came to where Micron should build its fab, we knew we were holding four aces. We had the killer combo, ample space, clean power, skilled workers, and sharp minds. And as I said, I knew that if Sanjay would just give it a careful and unbiased look, 
he would end up choosing White Pine, and so it happened. Well, Sanjay has been proving how smart he is, his brilliance since he came here as a 18-year-old student in pursuit of his version of the American dream, studying at Berkeley. Uh, he knows certainly a good hand when he sees one. He has been brilliant in his innovations. I mean, he's not just a business leader, but he's also responsible for countless patents and innovations. So this has really been an incredible partnership, and I'm so proud of what we've been able to do together. It's been, uh, it's been not always fun, a little tense sometimes. We, got, you know, we had to work through a lot of details, but uh, this, this is life-changing for the people of our state, and it's absolutely stunning in its scale of this announcement today. So, so I, as governor, joined by the United States Majority Leader of the Senate, Chuck Schumer, we are so, help, so delighted to formally welcome Sanjay and Mike Ryan to the New York family. Let us introduce our friend, San, CEO Sanjay Mitrova. Mitrova. <laughs> Can we get him in between it? Let's, let's get him. Let's hold up. Let me take this down. Yeah, put that down. Woo! It's such a great day. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, nice to see you. Who is this you? You get, you get a hug. Yes, yes, yes. This is, you can get two hugs. This is, this is, a, this is a, a double hug day. Yes. So. Good morning. And I want to thank Chancellor Severud and Syracuse University for hosting us in this beautiful building that supports our American military, veterans, and their families. We are here today to announce plans for a $100 billion semiconductor facility. You heard about that from Leader Schumer and Governor Hochul. But it's exciting to note that this is the largest semiconductor facility investment ever made in the United States, right here in central New York. And to make it happen, it takes a village. And I want to recognize several key players in this project. First, I'm extremely thankful to Senator Schumer and his team for all their work at the federal level and here in this state to ensure that this project would become a reality. Without the passage of CHIPS and the investment tax credit, we would not be standing here today. This all started with the Senator's ability to build a bipartisan coalition and persevere in Congress. Senator, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And thank you also to Governor Hochul for your tireless support in passing green chips legislation and welcoming Micron to here in the state. Your clear passion for Syracuse was infectious your team were gracious hosts as we explored the opportunity here over the past year. I want to thank Onondaga County Executive Ryan McMahon for his partnership and hospitality, Center State CEO Rob Simpson, and the entire team at Center State, Senator Gillibrand, Congressman John Ketko, Mayor Walsh, Kevin Yunus at Empire State Development, and the team at Syracuse University. And I would be remiss if I did not thank my team at Micron. Some of the team is present here. Manish, April, Courtney, Rob, Scott, Buddy, Dan, and of course, several others that worked for them. You were absolutely right to note earlier, Ryan, that this is the A-plus team in the nation. And without this team, Looking around across the country over many months, working 24-7, really, while they had their other regular day job, and determining the best site for Micron is simply phenomenal. And I can't tell you guys how proud I am of you in bringing us here to central New York. And I know that this is an exciting start of a long journey ahead of great success for Micron great success for, for the community here, and of course, great success for U.S. in establishing a clear leadership. So I thank you all for, 
from the bottom of my heart to make this happen. And I thank you for everybody that is here for joining us on this exciting day for Micron, for certainly the Syracuse region here, the state of New York and the country. And truly, today marks a true milestone for American technology manufacturing. So you probably know Micron, but some of you may be wondering who is Micron? We are one of the world's top semiconductor companies founded in Boise, Idaho, more than four decades ago. And Boise remains our headquarters today. We design and manufacture memory and storage semiconductors. Tiny, governor showed the chip. I have to show it to you again in case you missed it. These are tiny, this is our chip. Tiny, but powerful. Powerful and at the heart of nearly every computing system, from the smartphone in your pocket, to the driver safety system in your car, to the vast data centers and communication systems critical to everyday life, and to our national security. Memory and storage represent 30%, 30% of the semiconductor industry, the global semiconductor industry revenue. And we expect the memory market to double by the end of this decade, requiring even more manufacturing capacity. So Micron's global team of more than 45,000 has made us a technology leader, a clear technology leader across the globe in memory. It is their hard work that truly makes that announcement today possible. So I do thank all of our team members globally, 45,000 plus, who have positioned Micron to become the leader it is today and to be able to invest in the future and leadership of memory technology. Micron is an innovation powerhouse with more than 50,000 US patents and the only memory manufacturer based in the US. We use state-of-the-art equipment in vast clean rooms to create impossibly intricate circuits at massive scale. What we do is among the most advanced and difficult manufacturing processes anywhere in the world. Recently, we announced an exciting $15 billion investment at our leading edge R&D fab in Boise to bring back manufacturing to Idaho. And today, we are really, really excited to announce plans to build a new greenfield, leading edge, memory, mega fab in Clay, New York, just outside of Syracuse here. And over the next 20 plus years, we plan to invest up to $100 billion with the first phase investment of $20 billion planned by the end of this decade. Micron's central New York site could eventually include, as Senator Schumer shared earlier, four, four 600,000 square feet clean rooms. And yes, that is equivalent of 40 US football fields, and certainly, by far, the largest semiconductor clean room ever announced in the United States. And this investment will create nearly 50,000 New York jobs over those 20 plus years, including 9,000 high paying jobs at Micron. The community jobs will include construction, lab construction labor, suppliers, contractors, and other supporting roles. We expect to begin preparing the site in clay in 2023 and begin construction in 2024. Production output would, would ramp in latter half of the decade to meet industry demand. And Micron will begin direct hiring for the Begafab in line with that production ramp. An investment of this scale in the US is simply not possible without significant government and community support. And in the last few decades, consistent and strategic investment by foreign governments ensured that semiconductor manufacturing projects were actually focused overseas. So the result was predictable. Today, only 2% of the world's memory is made here in the US. But we are going to change that. 
We are going to change that, and the New York Fab is central to Micron's strategy to grow U.S. memory production to 10% of the global supply in the next decade, and to even a bigger percentage in the decade beyond. This manufacturing capability will enable U.S. supply chain resilience and security. Grants enabled by CHIPS and Science Act and New York's Green Chips Act will allow, project like, will allow projects like this to start construction in the U.S. at a cost competitive with the rest of the world. The investment tax credit will allow us to sustain that investment over time and keep a competitive semiconductor industry in the U.S. for decades to come. And we are deeply appreciative for the Biden administration's commitment to legislation that creates a level playing field for U.S. semiconductors. We chose New York for this leading-edge fab for several reasons. First, New York has a long history of semiconductor development and manufacturing and offers promising opportunity for the memory sector. Second, Central New York offers a rich pool of diverse talent. This includes communities that today are underrepresented in technology jobs and a significant military population. Over the years, Micron has found that veterans, in particular, have strong skill sets for the technical roles needed in semiconductor manufacturing. Third, New York provides strong education partnerships with K local K-12 programs, community colleges, and leading higher education institutions for top engineering and technical talent, extremely important to the semiconductor industry. And fourth, and extremely importantly, access to clean, reliable power and water to support a project of this massive scale while achieving our long-term environmental goals. Fifth, there is much to offer here for unique, uh, in, in terms of, for Micron employees and their families, in terms of the environment, urban and outdoor lifestyles, and affordable cost of living, and a strong local school system. And finally, the governor and the state of New York have offered comprehensive intensives of incentives over the life of this project to support hiring and capital investments. So we are very excited to be part of this community and look forward to partnering to build the workforce.